Merry Christmas. Good morning to you on this Christmas Day as you uh, participate in our Christmas Day worship from home. I'm guessing this is probably a uh, first for many of you to experience Christmas Day worship and to think that you can be gathered with your family at home, around your tree, or in your family room, even in your Christmas pajamas, and participating as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Uh, we're glad that you're tuning in. A reminder that if either Facebook or uh, YouTube becomes glitchy, you can jump onto the other. Or if you want to watch it later on in the day, it'll be available after the service is streamed. Blessings to you in this worship. <laughs>
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Amidst the darkness of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome the light of God's forgiveness. Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our lack of faith and trust in your will. Your son was born in the poverty of a stable. Forgive, Forgive our, our neglect, neglect of the, of the poor. poor. The shepherds left their flocks and went to Bethlehem. Forgive, Forgive our, our selfishness, selfishness and complacency. The Magi followed the star to find the savior of the nations. Forgive, Forgive our, our reluctance to seek you with all our hearts. The angel said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. With great joy, I announce to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our opening carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with, with you. All-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading on this Christmas day is found in Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, beginning with the seventh verse. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen. 
Your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has barred his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. We join in our next carol, Joy to the World. Our second reading is from the letter to Hebrews, the first chapter. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is a reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins... He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Our next carol, Lo, How a Rose Are Blooming. Our Christmas gospel is found in uh, the gospel of Luke, the second chapter, beginning with the eighth verse. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. We continue with our next carol. So brothers and sisters, this year's Christmas Day story is entitled Saint Is. It's the story of the birth of our Savior as shared by Saint Is, Issy, Mary's donkey. In the story, you're going to hear the story of the night of our Savior's birth interspersed with wisdom from a donkey. And brothers and sisters, know that I'm sharing only a small part. Because woven into this wonderful book is wisdom and the events from Mary um, as a young woman with Issy, her donkey, through the visit, her betrothal to Joseph, their journey. Today, I'll share some wisdom and the night that we celebrate this day. May this be a Christmas blessing for you. Humans do what they do. I stopped trying to understand them long ago, but they remain a curiosity. I can tell you that. According to my family, I am Issy. I think of myself as Iss. By this time in my life, I've been assigned too many names to remember them all. Is will do just fine. Numbered among those beasts called forth to serve the vast imagination of humankind, I bear the burdens of those two-footed beings who create images for their own eyes, notes for their own ears, flavors for their own tongues, and sensations for their own skin. They create empty spaces in which to place themselves and their gods as if they really don't belong here to this land, to this vast and magnificent world they wake up in every day and mostly ignore. Humans are strange. 
All that intelligence floating around in a sea of oblivion, would the beasts could be so lucky. Though blessed with seeing eyes, humans seem to have lost the importance of using them somewhere along the way. They tend, one should know, to see the absence of what they think should be there. Consequently, I'm bound to these creatures who create such monumental business for themselves. They indenture the animal kingdom to carry it out. What's more, they don't feel one bit bad about it. I mean, give me a soothing roll on the ground, a good back scratch, Ten minutes, hooves up with the sun warm on my belly, and I'm content. Donkeys know better than to overcomplicate life. And besides, when will we have the time? Like any mother, I feel compelled to tell you about my offspring. Having given birth to two Jennies and two Jacks, I have, like humans, created some very special things myself. Unlike all humans, but the enslaved, I said goodbye to them forever to continue my long walk in the service of these two-legged creatures. I've been walking all of my too long life. Humans have blossomed and withered as my feet have wandered through the gardens in which they grow and cast their seed. Before I arrived in Nazareth 12 years ago for my life on the trade routes, I rarely laid my head down for the night upon the same spot of earth. The stars overhead, consistent to my eyes, sometimes shone so clearly their light pulsing like breath. I only slumbered because tomorrow is always better received with a good sleep. But oh, those stars. Something in me echoed when they shone so brightly. I was frequently overloaded on these routes. All humans, even patient ones, do this when time, materials, and desperation greet each other in wonderment, as if trouble is something new. Oh, hello. It appears we've gotten ourselves into a bind. Fancy that. Believe me, it's nothing new. Believe me, most speedy solutions involve overloading something. Believe me, it's never fun for the overloaded ones, and it's almost never actually our fault. Humans have occupied the earth for many millennia, and despite their intelligence, have yet to learn that applying great amounts of force births even greater amounts of resistance. So they try applying more force, and then wonder why things break. Talk about stubborn. Yet certain humans walk among the rest, and I think they're better. But I should. Humans who realize others feel pain, even animals, arise in our lives. And when we beasts of burden find a sympathetic soul, we bear our burdens straight and tall, not crouched and always waiting for the sharp spark of struck pain. Like humans, donkeys pick their favorite person. And sometimes we are joined with them, we feel like we've known them all our lives, even if a life as long as mine. Mary is my person. The burdens we donkeys bear are never our own. Humans are much the same. They just utterly enjoy resenting the fact. We entered the vicinity of Bethlehem on slow, crowded roads surrounding Jerusalem. Zion overflows with people arriving to celebrate Succoth, their harvest feast, as well as to be counted for the Caesar's census. Listen to Is. A bountiful harvest should always be celebrated before the worry about the next year's begins. I guard the door of the stable. In the clear night, stars dance in clusters and great trails of heavenly light foams into the darkened dome in the same thrilling display, hanging there ever since I can remember. A very tired Mary appears suddenly older, more present to the aches and pains this world offers. I watch and I wait. It's all I can do. 
found the greatest trait in a human being to be the ability to hold their tongue. Perhaps like me, they've heard enough and seen enough, it's left them tongue-tied too. Sometimes life is so flabbergasting, it leaves some of us gabberfasting. Of course, more unexplainable events followed. And even more after that. Many times I wish their backs held burdens as easily as mine, but all I could do was remain close, help out when needed, guard them like I'm doing tonight. Although now there are three of them, one, two, three, and the third one is screaming his head off. True love will walk away if you tell it you don't want it. That's just the way it is but it will never stop loving you. That's just the way it is, too. That strange night was almost as glorious as this one now that the baby has finally stopped crying. Thank the good Lord. Seeing this outcome was impossible at the time, but any outcome of great magnitude usually is. But right now, Mary, like any woman who has just given birth, is inside the house getting cleaned up after her labor. Joe, not knowing what to do with the baby while she's gone, has laid him in the manger. Oh dear, he'll learn soon enough, won't he? This has been a very long night for us all. Having been forced to follow the twists and turns of humanity, I can assure you things get complicated when they rush forward in their own might to carve their path. They know this, but somehow always think they are the exception to the rule. Perhaps someday. And here we stay in Bethlehem, the first leg of this journey complete. And here we abide in a stable, no less. Exhausted amid a crowd of tired animals who journeyed here just like we did. Donkeys and horses, not to mention a beautiful red heifer curled near the manger, refusing to leave, even though Joe has nudged him with his foot several times. A baby still lays in that manger, wrapped in claws, because Joe fell asleep right there in the hay. Oh, good. Mary comes. She's a mother now. I trust her to be a good one. Able to stand up to older brothers for me. Imagine what she will do for her own child. She lays a hand atop my back. Well, friend, the angel was right, wasn't he? I squeak the first note of my bray as quietly as I can, and she circles her arm around my neck and squeezes. You were here. I'm so glad, my dear old Issy. I'm happier than I've ever been here on this night with only the stable in which to dwell and bear children, namely Jesus. We usher in our Messiah and praise God, the Most High, who seems to favor secret work in ways almost nobody ever suspects ahead of time. Men approach. Oh my, Mary says, what in the world do they want? It's quite unbelievable, but a group of shepherds are walking toward the stable. I can smell them from here. Humans plan, and God laughs. It's true. But God plans, and we donkeys say, how long will we be gone? And now, here, we watch the night deepen, yet more, as shepherds file into the stable, at least... Seven in total. He's in the manger. The baby's in the manger, one of them says, younger than the rest. Eyes glowing like an aged wood and skin browned more deeply than the others. His words soar with wonder extravagant from the mouth of a lowly shepherd. Obviously, Nathan, the oldest of the group, scolds. Nervous, perhaps. At being in town in such crowded conditions. Who knew how long they'd been out in the fields? Joe grabs his staff, gains his feet. I could almost hear his thoughts. Just as we were all getting a rest, it's like the angel said, Isaiah. Nathan turns right there, swaddled like a lamb, a spotless lamb. Isaiah nods. My Lord, I can hardly believe my eyes. 
The rest shuffle behind Isaiah and Nathan. All stand at the manger, several swipe at their tears. I have been in Israel long enough to know that a swaddled lamb means one thing and one thing only. It's perfection. It's rarity means it is born only to die. May I, asks the old man, may I touch him? Like Mary, he seems to be a true believer in God's promises. This is truly the Messiah, isn't it? I know it now. The shepherds being here speak to me, a low-born beast, humans of like caste, and they tell me I am not wrong. Mary smiles. Gently, I don't want to wake him. He's just stopped crying a little while ago. Jesus stretches the way newborn babies do, a tiny foot releasing itself from the folds of a cloth as if to say, yes, please go ahead. Isaiah reaches out a hand and touches the top of Jesus' foot. The other foot slides out and he touches that one too. Joe rubs his eyes. An angel, you said? We seem to collect angels, the three of us. But that's what happens in the service of the Most High. Mary lies down in the straw. Joe lifts the baby from the manger and hands him to his mother. She holds him close in the crook of her arm, his little head resting in the hollow of her wing. An angel? she asks too. Yes, tell us about your angel. Not just an angel. Although one did speak, Nathan said. There was a whole host of them. Praising God. Right, Isaiah? That's right. The older shepherd joins his young compatriot down on a knee. What's that fellow's name? Jesus. I bray instead. All heads swivel toward me at the noise, so I toss my head as I turn toward the stars and the night and the moon and the way the wind picks up at the leaves of the nearby olive trees at the neighbor's house. And the tender light of oil lamps shining through windows. Soft conversations seep into the atmosphere like clouds of warmth into the sea of life. All of creation seems to be making its presence known right here in this moment, including me. It's Jesus, says Joe. Jesus? Well, um, uh, I was expecting. Mary laughs. What were you expecting? Nathan blushes. Hassan, Hezekiah, they all laugh together. Nathan ducks under his hands. I mean, the angel did say he was the son of the Most High. Mary leans forward and places a hand on his arm. It's all right, Nathan. We've all thought the same thing. I bet even my sweet little Issy over there did. Bray, I do. Issy, shh, says Mary, still smiling. I stomp my front hooves and dance a little instead. One of the shepherds runs his hand along my spine as if to gently calm me. But Jesus sleeps on. I think he might be the type of human that sleeps through anything although it's probably too soon to tell. O oh, humans, my toil is easy compared to yours. I rise, I stand, I bear your burdens, and when you lift them from my back, they are gone. But you, you carry your burdens day and night, shouldering them even when there are none, and taking them on when you might choose otherwise. The city of David sleeps. The animals finally settle in after the commotion of feminine cries of blood, of tears, and of agony as new life bursts from a place much too small to give it easy passage. But it comes forth nonetheless. And it says, I am here. This Messiah has come to light the world, good humans. He's come from the secret place of a young woman from Nazareth who risked her life to bring him to everyone. Bray and bray and never stop reminding your children that Jesus comes to tell the world how much God loves it. All of it, including lowly beasts like Is. 
from all my years on this planet, I know God doesn't love donkeys more than anything else. But on a light like tonight, it sure does feel like it. And if a tale is ever told, you can be sure my Mary is the one, the only one that can tell in completion what has happened here tonight and how and why. Not that anyone will truly give her credit for it. But if I know Mary, it won't matter. That the story lives and breathes will be enough for she who believes God's promises. Humans carry their heaviest burdens deep within them. Better a load of heavy bricks over that any day. Here we are in another stable. A young one curled up into the side of Mary. Our day for curling together are now gone. Perhaps she might make her way to me an odd evening and lay down and remember the good old days and we'll breathe together like we always end up doing. But all young people grow up, don't they? They assume their positions in life, and if a donkey is lucky, she's asked along for the ride. The Messiah is sleeping. The shepherds entered their fields anew, and a star appeared on the horizon tonight that hadn't been there yesterday, as if its light had finally met the earth on the night the light of the one light came. No braying now in the stillness, but my heart brays in joy, and that is enough. My years are now numbered. His birth has brought my freedom, and for that I love him already. I will carry the Messiah. Where, when, and why, I do not know. I only know that I know it will come to pass in one lifetime. One lifetime more? Seems like but a dream. But I know whose donkey I am because I know whose donkey I have been since I was 12 years old. I belong to the Master now. I've been more places, walked more miles, seen more things than you have. And you know what? I'm still just a donkey. She's right. If it isn't the vineyard, it's that grove of sycamore trees north of town. There are all sorts of places that shall always remain a secret between Mary and me. If that little baby doesn't end up wandering around the countryside looking for things, I will be most surprised. And maybe Jesus will invite old Is to join him sometimes. Don't be jealous. Humans like to say there are only two certainties in life, death and taxes. But they seem much more concerned about taxes than death. I still haven't figured that one out. Mercy to us all indeed, even here now in Bethlehem. Especially now, for in a moment, God always enters the world. The world that was never left behind to begin with. The night has reached its darkness and the sun will soon the sun will rise unaware of its own perfection the red heifer still sleeps by the manger perfect red heifers are a rare sacrifice their ashes mixed with water from a running source namely the pool of siloam and used sparingly they render a person clean after they have touched a corpse literally after having felt death In many ways in which being unclean is a sort of death, an unacceptable form of banishment, I suppose the heifer brings a human back into life of sorts, into community, into togetherness. I've heard much talk of the Messiah since he came to us. To be born through Mary, to be born tonight, and perhaps like the heifer, he will somehow bring the living dead back to life. To be born in all hearts, And perhaps someday to be born as all humans, to revive them all again, just as God breathed life into their very first one. Oh, humans. Oh, humans, my toil is easy compared to yours. I rise, I stand, I bear your burdens, and when you lift them from my back, they are gone. But you carry your burdens, shouldering them even when there are none, taking them on what you might choose otherwise. Perhaps this new baby, our Jesus, will change that. 
Mankind will seek him to take away the burdens so rife. Oppression, isolation, thirst, hunger, exposure, and perhaps he will. But I would like to think he will first remove that which causes all of those things, and maybe I'm just a stupid old beast who nobody thinks should know better. But I know what that thing is. What is it, oldis, you might ask? The refusal to believe something so very simple. I remember hearing the prophet, King David's words long ago during his reign, I am confident that I will see God's goodness in the land of the living. Confidence, trust, knowing God is good. If humankind really knew this, everything would change once they agreed to live like more sharing, more weeping together, more meals, more love, more working. And nobody would die without a hand to hold. Someone stirs inside the house as the first light touches the sky, blue and refined. The stable occupants will follow suit as they awaken. The tune of birds and the doves that roost in the rafters. So I will find this moment to echo the poet's words. For truly I have seen God's goodness in the land of Israel, and in his name is Jesus. Well, donkeys have more than one trick. We only have one track, and mine is to bear the Messiah. Here in the stable a fine hand ascends upon my neck. Like one of the doves as she coos in the day, Rest now, Issy, Mary whispers. You brought me to this place. You've guarded me. You've been with me every step of this journey. Rest. She leads me to a bed of fresh straw. She has no idea how many miles I walk to get here. We've still got miles to go together, but I don't want to tell her that now. The soft bedding cushions my flank, and she's right. It's now time for Issy to rest. I love you, little friend, she whispers. I squeak softly, and she smiles. Her sweetness, the last thing I see as my eyes close, and sleep settles on me like Mary's tender care. Of course Jesus rode one of us into Jerusalem. Horses may get you there in style if you're smart, but donkeys will get you there alive because we're smart. It will be some time before this baby grows old enough to begin anointing the world as the Messiah is called to do, as fully loving, fully trusting, fully engaged witness to the current work of the Most High in the world. But the quiet anointing has already begun. The anointing of yet another birth in the town of Bethlehem. But this time a star appears. Angels proclaim God's glory, shepherds adore, and a mother cries out in a stable as a garden of animals surround her like living flowers in a field, all present for God's first newborn kiss. It'll be some time before I carry him into Jerusalem, as is my fate, the delivery of a king. And what will they do with this king? Will they crown him truly? Ignore him or they kill him. Knowing his mother, he may be crowned or killed, but I doubt he will ever be ignored. I've lived a long time, and prophets have been killed for far, far less. So rest, Messiah, rest. Old Is knows, Is has chosen your side, for the Most High only arrives in purity and perfection upon the word yes. Amen. 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 So you were looking for an ending? Oh, my friend. So you were looking for an ending? Oh, my friend. The story you see has just begun. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the good news of this Christmas day. 
that your Son, the Messiah, was born, came into our world to be with us as Emmanuel, to be the light of the world, to save us from our sins. Help us to live in the joy of that good news. Amen. We join in singing our next carol, Go Tell on a Mountain. In joy and wonder, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Sustain the church by your word made flesh among us. Feed us with your gracious gifts of written word, the proclaimed word, and the visible word of the body and blood of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. great. Shine your dawn on all creation. Restore health to polluted rivers and seas, to hills and plains destroyed by natural disaster. Reveal your glory in all that you have made. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. Enter into the places of darkness in this world, where pride and abuse of power threaten right relationships among peoples. Overcome the darkness with your light. Hear us, O God. Your mercy Mercy is great. great. Pour out your mercy and righteousness on all people. And by your spirit, bring renewal to those who long for wholeness and health. Give them hope of abundant life. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Now that we have seen your salvation, keep us diligent in seeking your presence among us. And make us eager to proclaim good news to those in need. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Rejoicing for the gift of the saints, whose lives announced your salvation. We pray that you would mold our lives to always bear witness to the goodness you show your people. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Almighty God, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, confident that you fulfill your promises through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our next carol, Away in a Manger. Yeah. 
let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be a blessing for others. With the trees of the fields and with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the word that Mary brought to birth carry you into new and abundant life. Amen. Amen. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. Amen. Amen. May the word that angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We join in our sending carol. Good Christian friends rejoice. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Send us before him bow, and he is in that manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.